Welcome back to Python scripting in Unreal Engine. In this first video, we will go over how to create a Power of Two validator for our Unreal Engine assets. As we can see here, two of our three files don't have a Power of Two texture. In order to start our script, we again import Unreal into our workspace. To start off, we have to instantiate a few helper utility classes. The editor utility library will give us access to any kind of information regarding our editor itself. We will use the instance of the editor utility library class in order to get the selected items from the user. In order to get the selected assets from the user, we can use our editor util instance and use the get selected assets method. This will return a list of assets, so in order to get the number of assets that are selected, we can just use the Python internal length. We also want to keep track of the number of textures that are not a power of two. Using a simple for each loop, we can now iterate over all of our selected assets. Each object in Unreal inherits from the object base object. This means that we can use the getFName method to get the name of our asset. If we do this in a for each loop, we can print out the a name of each asset to our output log. Switching over to Unreal, we can now select the elements and, and execute our Python script. Here we can see that the asset name for each asset was printed to the Python log. As next steps, we want to get the X and the Y size of our textures, but before we do that, we want to put this asset name into a variable instead of just logging it. In order to get the X and Y size, we can use two more internal methods. Each asset has a blueprint.getX and getYSize method. The next step is to check whether both X and Y size are power of two values. In order to do that, we can use the log method of the math library. In order to finalize the check, we also have to check whether our result is an integer. Since math.log is not an internal method, we have to add the import for the math library to the top. The last element we have to add here is a control structure to check whether one of the elements is not valid. If either the x or y size is not a power of two value, we want to let the user know that we have found an invalid texture. To add some more information to the output, we will add the x and the y size. Switching back to the Unreal Engine, we can now rerun our script. This time we get a narrow, so let's fix those invocations. And then again rerun our script. This time we get the expected output of our x and y size. We also want to give the user some more information about the path of the asset. So let's add a second logging statement. The parameter here will be the asset path. We are using a variable that is not existing already. So let's create that with asset.getPathName. And this is again a method of the object base object of Unreal. As a last step, we want to increment the not powered of two variable so we can print it out at the end of the script. If we switch back to Unreal again and re-execute our script, we can now see the correct output that gives us the paths to the different elements and a final information about how many have been checked and how many textures have been found problematic. Our script has one last problem now. If we have other objects than textures, our script will throw an error. 
This problem is due to the blueprint get x size and y size method calls we're using. They are only possible for texture 2D objects. The simple solution here is to wrap the whole section with a try and catch block to catch the exception that is going to be thrown if it's not a texture 2D object. It is recommended to always use more specific exceptions other than just exception. But to keep this tutorial a little bit more simple, we will stick with a very basic approach here. If we find an element that is not a texture 2D object, we will simply log it to the console. In addition to the asset name, we will also log out the error text. If we should encounter some more problems, this will give us more indication on where we can find a fix to the problem. Switching back to the Unreal Engine, we can see that it now checked 4 instead of 3 elements and 2 textures found problematic, but there is no error thrown. That's it for this tutorial, we finished our first Python script.